Hmm. Uh, oh my god. Are you alright? Ugh, I'm fine. But I've tripped on this floorboard three times today. Can you get the tools out of the top cabinet so we can fix this? Sure. We'll fix it up before anyone else. No <laughs> breaking sound. Colin! <sighs> I'll be right back. Ah, my head. Ooh. What? Is it bad? Now, uh, try not to panic. Ah, no! My digital mind! That's where I keep all my passwords! Oh no! My screen broke! It'll be okay. We'll, we'll tell Roy to reboot you. Here, let me put your brain back in. What? Hey. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were just an object person. Uh, sorry for about smacking you. Eh, don't worry about it. Happens more often than you think. Anyway, I'm here about the death. What? No one here is dead. It says right here, someone in this house is definitely dead. Has been for quite some time, actually. Not sure how I missed it. Are you the Grim Reaper? Oh, uh, something like that. Sketch, stop talking. It's a coffin. Uh, he's here about the reaping. Here, why don't we sit down? And we'll see if we can sort this out. Sure. Would you like some tea? That'd be lovely, thank you. Alright, let me see this improperly annoying coffin for- ah! Watch your step. Why is this pit full of blood? Yeah, sorry. Comes with the territory. Here, let me help you out of there. There we are. You okay? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. No problem. Truly sorry for your loss, by the way. Yes, that... Uh, who is dead exactly? No one. That's the problem. You must have the wrong house, Mr. Coffin. No one here is dead. Unless... Uh, Gilbert, are you dead? Just inside. Tony, you're not dead, are you? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think so. Here, let me check the certificate. Says someone named Colin is dead. What? Me? I, I'm not dead. Says right here, Colin the computer, deceased. That doesn't make sense. Here's your tea. Oh, thank you. Here's yours, Tony. Earl Grey, of course. You know me so well. I don't understand. Why would I be dead? My hard drive is fine. My motherboard is practically new. It's just my screen that's broken. It's irreplaceable. It wasn't that bad a fall. Did someone spill something on you, maybe? No. Colin's already been dead once. He overloaded himself and broke down. Nothing since then at all. Yes, that's what I remember seeing. So many documents, I can't keep it all straight sometimes. But I was repaired! I don't know what to tell you. By all accounts, you are dead. Hey, I could be dead in this place. Sometimes I kind of want to die living in this suburban hellscape. Uh, let's see, what's your name? Uh, Tony. T-O-N-Y, the talking clock. Sorry, I don't have a Tony. Check on to Anthony. Sorry, it's just not your time. I'll be sure to let you know, though. Sketchbook, kill me. I'm not going- Time comes for all of us, Sketch! Eh, fine, here. Yeah, that doesn't count. Well, come along, everyone. We've got a funeral to plan. No! I won't stand for this. I am not dead. And my boss repaired me, and I am no longer considered dead by his standards. Are you sure? Why don't you call him and ask? <laughs> Fine, then. I will. Uh, sketchbook, how do I call? Hit the uncreative telephone icon. Then what? Go to your contacts. Uh, where is that? You know what? It'll just go faster finding it. Here. 
I could have done it. Sure, Colin. This is May. How may I help you? You're not Roy. No, I'm not. May, ask Roy if I'm dead. According to my records, you were technically dead for a day, but you were rebooted. She? That's what I thought. I knew I wasn't dead anymore. Also, can you reboot me again? My screen shattered. Alright, but you only get five more of these. There, I'm as good as new, and my manager says I'm not dead. Then why do my documents say that you are? Come on, Colin, just take the free ticket out of Clay Hill. This town is terrible. I actively envy you right now. Everyone runs out of time, you know that. Listen to your clock, friend. Death is a natural and very normal part of life. Right? That's what I've been trying to tell people. If nothing dies, is time even really passing? Yes, exactly. Time is unstoppable and slows for no one, and death is the inevitable endpoint. Ah! Finally, someone else who understands! The life cycle is truly the purest symbol of time. Everything is constantly changing. Isn't the passage of time just magnificent? It really is. Beautiful, even. Uh, uh. I don't know. Death is a dreadful concept to me. If there is an afterlife, then you will be forced to exist for all eternity. But if it is nothingness, then you can never exist and experience anything ever again. Both are equally terrifying to me. I would prefer an afterlife where I can turn my consciousness on and off, but I know I can't choose what my death is like. Maybe by the time I'm 80, I'll be begging for nothingness. I suppose I'll be too dead to care once the time comes. Yeah, see, I don't want to deal with any of that right now. Come now, being dead can't be so bad. At the very least, you couldn't ask for a nicer fellow to escort you to your demise. Oh, you're too kind. Now, I am not dead. I refuse. Well, it appears we're at an impasse. There's only one thing to do then. We must take this to the Talking Object Court. Great. Alright, what stupid thing is going on today? Madam Judge, the coffin here says that I am dead, but clearly I am not. Well, I was right about it being stupid. Alright, coffin man, or lawyer, or whatever. Stay your case. Your Honor, according to my client, Colin the computer died on June 20th of last year. Oh, it was June 20th for five years. Shut the hell up, Colin. Go ahead, Mr. Briefcase. According to my client, and confirmed by witnesses, Colin the computer overloaded his memory, causing his hard drive to be damaged, which caused him to be dead. And I say I am not dead because Rory rebooted me. And here I am, not dead. Cool, cool. And Mr. Computer, do you have a lawyer with you today? I, I, sketchbook, help me. Me? I, I don't know the first thing about law. Come on, you were with me when I died. You know the situation better than anyone. Oh, uh, yes, but, oh, go ahead, sketch. Talking object court is a farce, and I don't think anyone here actually knows what they're doing. You'll be just as qualified as anyone else. Hmm, good point. Yes, Madam Judge. I'll be acting as Colin the Computer's lawyer today. Great. Call someone to the stand already. Um, I guess I call Mr. Coffin to the stand. Mr. Coffin, why is it that my client should be dead, aside from the supposed cause? Who are you to deprive Colin the Computer of his right to live? Well, it's kind of my job. Now, it is not my job to do the killing. I just cut people through the process. I find out who is dead, and I help them be dead. Colin is dead, I guide him to death. And if someone objects so harshly, what is stopping you from just letting them live? If I let everyone who objected live, then hardly anyone would die. We all have to die sometime. It would be cruel to play into the delusion that they're not dead. Well, then why? Um, how come you, uh, no further questions. I choked. I'm ruining everything. Mr. Coffin, explain to the court, if you will, why you do what you do. Why do you need to guide people through death? Well, 
I understand more than anyone that death is a very hard thing for people to go through and for their loved ones to cope with. Death isn't as bad as people think it is, though. It's simply a part of life. You're born, you live a little while, you die. Death isn't separate from life, it's a piece of it. Sometimes you live a full, rich life and die when you're a hundred. Sometimes it comes randomly and swiftly at any moment. It will never feel like the right time, no matter what. But everyone runs out of time eventually. My job is to help people understand and accept that. Beautifully put. Thank you, Mr. Coffin. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I'd like to call Colin the computer to the stand. Mr. the computer, are you sure you're not dead? Yes! Look at me! Do I look dead to you? How are you sure you're not dead? Because I'm talking, and breathing, and generally conscious. If you were dead, how did you get into the state of consciousness? Roy first sent me, fixing me entirely, as I have stated. So you didn't actually recover? <sighs> Not on my own, no. No further questions. I don't know, sketchbook. That coffin makes a stunningly elegant point. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure you have a case. No, wait, shut up. I know exactly what to do. Colin, would you say you were ever actually dead? My body was non-functioning, which I believe counts. Yes, but your mind was still going, even if your body couldn't move. That's right, it was. I was in my digital world for the entire ordeal. Can you prove this, Mr. Sketchbook? Tony! Y yes? Whenever one of us dies, you would know their time of death. Because time is your job, right? Well, uh, yes, but you might be in the witness box for this. No, it's fine, I don't care. For example, what was Vonograph's time of death? 5.35pm on June 1st. And Kirby? 6.18pm on June 7th. Revived June 20th. Dylan? I forgot Dylan existed for a while there, but 8.59 a.m. on June 17th? And Colin? Well, it was... Um, it was... Uh, hmm. Well, that's embarrassing. I don't think I remember his time of death. And me? What? You've never been dead. Exactly! Distinguished talking objects of the court. I was with Colin the computer the day Mr. Coffin claims he died. I was inside of his still functioning digital world with him. At no point did Colin actually die, or I would have died as well, and there would be two of us on trial. <sighs> it's true, I don't have the sketchbook as right now. Colin may have been on the brink of death, his physical body may no longer have worked, but he was alive, and I was there to see it. I best my kiss. Well, I'm convinced and want to go home. Call the computer is alive. There will be no reaping. Case dismissed. Well, thanks anyway for being my lawyer on such a short notice. Oh, I'm not a lawyer. Ha! <laughs> Sketchbook. Thank you, thank you. You saved my life. I love you. Oh, I love you too, Colin. Hey, just wanted to say sorry about the misunderstanding. Some files must have gotten mixed up and documents went out too early. Well, that's not important now. No hard feelings on my end. I suppose it's okay. You were just doing your job. Thank you for accepting that I am, in fact, alive. No problem. But hey, if you ever actually did, you know who to summon. A and hey, your name is Tony, right? That's right. Gotta tell you, it's great finding someone so understanding and accepting of the concept of death. Oh, uh, well, time is kind of my thing. I can tell. You really know your stuff. I'm impressed. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You know what? Here's my number if you ever need someone to help you with funeral services or anything definitely.
glad some good came out of this ordeal. Otherwise, it was a giant waste of a day where I learned nothing. That's not true. You can learn something from any situation. I learned that having your facts straight is always important in any scenario. It benefits everyone and could even be the difference between life and death. Perhaps you're right. I suppose I did learn the value of friendship. Having good friends by your side can help in any conflict, big or small. And I learned that, in addition to being great romantic, I am also bi. Wow, good for you. Yeah, how did you learn that? I will not be answering any follow-up questions at this time. Uh, but, but I did learn something else. Colin, even if we don't always like each other. I like you. Vine, even if I don't always like you. I do suppose I prefer you being alive rather than dead. If only for sketchbook's sake. Ah, thank you, Tony. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. And just saying that out loud makes me realize how low the bar has been set. Well, it's the best you're getting. I accept that. Get out of my courtroom! Yes, ma'am. The end.